Hey everyone, Dr. Shook here. Hope you're doing well today. In today's video, what I want to share with you is how poor nutritional status could cause hypothyroid symptoms. And this is something that is not as simple as just taking these vitamins uh, and these minerals and the antioxidants and it fixing itself because there's typically a reason that this is occurring. But let's talk about let's talk about what your body needs. Let's talk about some of the things that you might not want to do. And then let's always talk about what might be causing it, okay? So first of all, you've got to remember anytime we're talking about any hormone in the body, okay, any hormone, we have to consider production of the hormone, transportation of the hormone, sensitivity of your body to the hormone in circulation, and detoxification and elimination of the hormone. That is hormonal physiology from beginning to end. If you neglect any of those pieces, you're going to have a potential, you'll be overlooking a potential problem that may cause you to not feel well even though quantities are normal, right? Because in our conventional medical model, how do we look at it? It's quantity only, right? They just check to see if it's there. If it's there, then you don't have a problem. If it's not there, then you might need some, right? But it's not that simple, right? Because you gotta produce it. It has to be moved throughout the body. Your body has to be sensitive to it and then your body has to break it down and clear it. And and problems with any of those steps can interfere with the way that your body uses the hormone and cause you not to feel well. And that is, that is what a functional approach to the endocrine or hormonal system is, okay? So, all right, let's talk about what, what we're focusing on today. Remember, production, transportation, sensitivity, detoxification. We are talking about production, production, right? Why you might not be able to um, produce the hormone. This has to do with production. Okay, so uh, let's review some basics. Your thyroid gland primarily makes T4 and T3 hormones, okay? T4 here is primarily, uh, the, the primary hormone produced, 93%, and it is inactive. Your body can't really use it for anything. So T4 has to be converted into T3. Now, T3 is the active form. Now, when your gland produces T4 and T3, 93% is T4 and 7% is T3. The important thing to understand here is that we need more T3, so there has to be a process of conversion which we're gonna talk about here. It's kind of what this arrow represents to get us from here to here. There are some things that our body needs, not only to produce T4 here, but for the, for the conversion process, okay? So uh, let's, let's look at this. Now, let's, let's first review, review the, um, the, the vitamins, the minerals, and the antioxidants that your body needs to produce and convert T4 to T3. And there's, there's, there's more to this process. Like there, there are things that break conversion of T4 to T3 that were other than just nutrients. There's, there are a lot of other potential problems, but let's just take one thing at a time, nutritional status, okay? So let's start with, uh, first of all, one of our most important minerals is selenium. Selenium is very important. Typically the average person's gonna need uh, 200 uh, micrograms so maybe up to 400. It depends on what your diet's like. I mean, you, you really, um, you know, 200 micrograms is usually where I'll start people, 200, 250, something like that. But selenium is very important. Your, your body actually your, makes a very potent antioxidant that helps with inflammation called glutathione. Now, glutathione is selenium dependent. So if you don't have selenium, you're not gonna make glutathione well. So glutathione is very important because it helps to decrease the inflammatory process that is a normal, normal part of thyroid hormone production. So your body, when you make T4 and T3, your body will produce hydrogen peroxide as a byproduct. Glutathione helps to neutralize that inflammatory process so that you don't cause damage at the thyroid. Deficiencies in selenium can encourage an inflammatory response, okay? Next, zinc. Zinc is very important. Now these are cofactors required for conversion and production. Vitamin D, very important. Vitamin A, very important for this conversion process, okay? Glutathione, I just wrote it in for you. Glutathione's critical. Glutathione's critical for reducing, decreasing the inflammatory process if you're autoimmune. And how many people, now think about this for a second, how many people in the United States or what percentage of people in the United States are hypothyroid, meaning they have low T4, low T3, because of autoimmunity against their gland. If you don't know this, it is 
research suggests up to 90% of people, that means nine of 10 people. So you get 10 people in a room, they're hypothyroid, nine of 10, they're hypothyroid because of autoimmunity. We're just gonna put AI. In particular, they, most of them have autoimmunity against um, an enzyme that produces T4 uh, called TPO or thyroglobulin. And depending on how, what their presentation is, what their symptoms are like, they might be diagnosed with Hashimoto's. That's what we call it, Hashimoto's disease. It is the clinical presentation. Um, so we'll get into that in another video, but the main thing you need to understand is nine out of 10 people are dealing with hypothyroidism because of an autoimmune process. Glutathione helps to reduce some of the inflammation that's produced with autoimmunity. It helps actually improve immune system regulatory function. A lot of people are deficient in glutathione and don't have enough. So you need glutathione, it's really important. Now, why would someone be deficient here in these vitamins and minerals? We're gonna talk about that here. You know what, before I get to that, let's talk about T4 production. And a lot of people will ask me, well, you know, do I, I I'm hypothyroid. Do I need to be taking Do I need to be taking iodine? Do I need to take iodine? And here's the thing guys, um, I don't recommend iodine ever unless someone unless we test them and they're low. Okay? Don't ever recommend it. Now I'm seeing iodine deficiencies more commonly now than I have in the past because People have heard this and they're, they're you know, only consuming sea salt and these natural salts that are not iodized and they're not getting much in their diet. So we will look at this and we will consider iodine. I'm not anti-iodine, but I definitely am not pro high doses of iodine at all. Because a lot of people, this has been shown in, in numerous, several studies where they've introduced iodine into a population. And we have this for several countries because they've, you know, they're, the number one cause of hypothyroidism or low thyroid function across the world is actually an iodine deficiency, okay? So there are, there are a lot of countries where they've iodized the food supply. They've put iodine into the food supply, and what they've noticed is that, yes, it helps with hypothyroidism, but what happens is they see a spike in Hashimoto's. And, the, and that occurs, we think that occurs because the iodine increases the T4 production and that inflammatory process. Remember I said as, a, as part of T4 being produced and T3, you have hydrogen peroxide. And we think that, we know this, we know that there's an increased incidence rate of Hashimoto's or inflammatory um, diseases or autoimmune thyroid diseases with um, you know, with um, iodization. And we think it's due probably because there are other, there are other vitamins, there are other minerals deficient like selenium. So when you don't have selenium, you can't make glutathione, you can't reduce or decrease the inflammatory process. So these are all things that can happen. So, so okay, so iodine, I only if, I only recommend it, um, I'll typically, let me put it this way, I will typically give it to people in very low doses with selenium as long as they don't have deficiencies of other uh, antioxidants. If they're deficient in other antioxidants, you know, then this is something that I would not recommend and I do recommend testing this quite often, okay? So let's talk about why you might be deficient here in selenium, zinc, vitamin D, vitamin A, and glutathione, okay? Number one, poor absorption. Okay, poor absorption. So you're, you're, you're just not able to absorb these nutrients. Now, why is that? Well, it could be because of hypothyroidism, right? So hypothyroidism actually will cause a lot of issues with absorption. And you know, we could get into a lot of technical details here uh, and we could say, you know, I won't get into it, but I'm just gonna say that, that there's, there are nuances to all these things that I'm telling you. Um, it's different for every person. Hypothyroidism will tend to cause decreased hydrochloric acid concentration in the stomach. So you don't break down the food well, you don't uh, extract the nutrients. You also have, typically with low stomach acid, you have, um, you have poor activation of the gallbladder and the pancreas to release enzymes. So you don't, you don't absorb the nutrients in the gut. And that's, that can be due to hypothyroidism. 
So low stomach acid, poor absorption, hypothyroidism can contribute. Another thing that can uh, contribute here is infection. Okay, infection. Now infection can contribute because it causes, especially GI infection, right? GI infection, because it, it causes an environment where there's an inflammatory um, reaction in the gut that causes more mucus production. Uh, it can damage the lining of the gut, the mucous membrane, which, is, which has these finger-like projections. They look kind of like this. Okay, if we look at the cells that line the stomach, or that I should say line the intestinal tract, there's the nucleus, and this points inward. See these things right here, okay, those little finger-like things, those are called microvilli. What happens is they can get damaged, and there's, there's actually a mucus layer on top, and there are enzymes that are produced in here, and they help you break down food and digest it. If these things get damaged, or if the lining's damaged, you won't produce enzymes, and, and it can create some issues with absorption. You have to have that for absorption. So this is a big issue. Uh, another thing that can happen is, inflammatory bowel disease, okay? Inflammatory bowel disease, so what am I talking about? I'm talking about, and these all, you see they all point, uh, point to poor absorption. Like we're talking celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and these are also autoimmune conditions. So we see autoimmunity creating a lot of problems for people, a lot of problems for people. And this is one of the main reasons that, you know, whenever I work with people, we look at autoimmunity. I would say that I've, I probably help people to get well and feel better by addressing the driving factors of their autoimmunity more than I do things like this, because it's the autoimmunity that's contributing to most of the symptoms and problems that people are having. So if you understand how to work with the immune system, how to improve its regulatory function, and, and help dampen that autoimmune process, you might be able to put it into remission and actually help the person feel tremendously better. But even if you only improve it a little bit, you tend to really improve their quality of life and how they feel. And you educate them and teach them what they need to do to help themselves. So these are the things uh, that you'll commonly see contribute to it. So I hope this helps you to better understand it's not as simple as just taking vitamins and minerals, right? There, there's some other things that we have to consider, but if you're trying to help yourself and you don't have the ability to get some assistance and have someone to professionally guide you, then this might be something that you want to consider trying. If you do need help, if you are struggling and you would like someone to assist you, we work with people across the United States and around the world to help them really um, investigate the factors that are contributing to the symptoms they're having. So I work a lot with all kinds of autoimmune conditions, uh, but primarily, you know, I, I've worked a lot with thyroid autoimmunity and uh, with autoimmune processes and people just not feeling well and, you know, having thyroid dysfunction as a component of it. And if you want some assistance, I'll be happy to take a look at your case, see if I can't give you another perspective. You know, what we do is we look at your health history and everything that's been done to this point as thoroughly as possible. You know, we spend we spend an hour at least talking to you. We look over your intake forms and everything that you give us and tell us, and we try to get as much information as possible. So we'll spend a few hours gathering all this data and trying to figure out what's going on with you. Then we'll, what we'll do is we will typically make recommendations for advanced diagnostic testing to help you now, to really help con confirm what I'm thinking about your case, like looking at your history, there will be some, some hunches and things that, that I think, and we will typically use that testing to confirm my suspicions, right? And give us more specific direction and the very best starting point possible to help you, you know, really try to get your health back. So if you're, you know, if you're interested in that at all, please do visit us at new thyroidconsult.com. You can just go to new new.thyroidconsult.com and you can learn all about working with me as a distance consulting client anywhere around the world or across the U.S. You're welcome to come see us in, uh, in North Carolina if you'd like to. Uh, but, um, you know, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please do post them here. We will do everything that we can to help you, you know, without ever coming to see us. We've got hundreds of videos that are available where I try to teach you how to help yourself because it's my mission to help people to become empowered and be their own advocate. Because quite frankly, the only way that we're going to change and make a difference in this world is by empowering you and other people to help themselves. There is no way that I can work one-on-one -on -one with the, uh, the smallest fraction of people and, and really make a difference in this. We have to teach people to help themselves. We have to teach you to think for yourself. That's, that's a big part of it, to question and always ask, 
why. What's going on? What's driving this process? What do I need to do? What do I need to think? So that you can, you know, you can be, I, I use the word like active participant, right? Because you can ask questions of your doctor. You can try to, you know, help and be part of that process because quite frankly, you know it and I know it. Most of our primary care physicians, no matter where they are in the world, they're not familiar with this functional approach, right? They're, fun they're, they're familiar with the, the levels being too high or too low and using their toolbox. And those are very valuable. And your doctors are great people. They want to help you, but you have to approach this from also a functional perspective, understanding the mechanisms of the biochemistry so that you have, you know, really the best chance to support the biochemistry the way that it should be working, you know, to, to optimize it for the best outcomes. So if you have any questions, you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to us, but I really appreciate you spending this time with me and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day and I look forward to talking